Hi. Uh, where's the Ingham family? Where are you? Stand up. Okay, what I want to say is this is the 33rd time that I've made the decision whether to have an academic ceremony outdoors or in, and I took the advice of the Ingham, Ingham family. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, sit down, be quiet now. So thank you, Father Rick, who's new and who turns out to be a praying fool. Uh, thank you, David Whalen, the provost. My name is Larry Arn, and I work here at the college. Uh, normally, I would be introduced by David, but I'm truncating today. David usually says bad things about me anyway. I also congratulate the physics department, who told me that it was going to rain, and to call attention to themselves, they're sitting ostentatiously under umbrellas right down there. <laughs> It proves the great truth that nerds can be vain too, doesn't it? <laughs> so instead of telling you the many things I have to tell you and telling you why they're true, I'm just going to tell you what they are. You'll learn why, they, why they're true. The first one is the college is old. It's a wonderful thing about it. It was founded by heroes and wise people. You should read their story. We will talk about it a lot while you're here. They founded it just like the United States was founded, according to principles that claim to be eternal. And that means that we could not change it except to make it into something different, and we do not feel the power to do that. Nor will you have the power to do that. Knowing what it is, you have come here to do what it does. Welcome. That's why we can have a partnership. What it does is easy to stay, to say. The college believes in human freedom and the governance that contributes to that. It has fought for that for 173 years. The college believes in the Christian faith. It believes that religious freedom is a high principle, and those who are here who are not of that faith are welcome as full members and will be loved and respected. There are three in this freshman class who are uh, children of old friends of mine and I promised them favoritism, <laughs> and I promised they will not like that. <laughs> it will be good for them in the long term. To you parents, I say, we understand how a child is raised. We understand that we're only here to complete that. We understand what you have done. That understanding, by the way, is manifest in the fact that your child will say goodbye to his girlfriend or, go or, or boyfriend before they go to bed at night. That's an old institution here under some considerable pressure the way the world is going, and we intend to maintain that institution and everything like it. You are welcome here. The most important thing we're going to accomplish today is just in a minute, you're going to stand up and take a pledge to help us in this work and we are going to rely upon that pledge. We are going to give you information. Your child will not like it, perhaps, that we send the grades of your child to you. I once had a girl say, I, I'm 23 now, and I put myself through college, and still you send my grades to my parents. And so thereafter, they were, refused, they were addressed to the, ver the parents of the very mature Raylene Kucinich. The founders of the college were moral people. They tried to live upright lives. Think what that means. You must become stern and steady in the face of pain. That's not easy. That's what courage is. You must be prepared to forego pleasures. That's what moderation is. You must be just to others and yourself. That's what justice is. And that means not taking for yourself what you do not deserve, and appreciating rightly so far as you can what others deserve. And finally, you must become wise. This is, I'm told, the smartest freshman class we have ever admitted. It's very, their qualifications are just awesome. And so they are now going in the next four months to give the most vivid uh, uh, pre uh, exhibition 
of the distinction between intelligence and knowledge that we have ever seen around here. Finally, to you, your students, we are here, quoth the articles, to improve your minds, de develop your minds, and improve your hearts. That means the moral and the intellectual virtues. You're about to go through stages. One of them is, wow, this is serious. The next one will be, how can I ever learn it? The next one will be, this is a lifetime activity, is it not? It's a way to live, not a possession. You will not get very far if you do not give yourself to that way with the intention of maintaining it all the way until you die. And as you grow older and wiser and more knowing, then you will come to understand why we attribute only to God and the angels the kind of knowledge we would love to have on the night before finals, which is to understand everything all at once. We don't get to do that. We have to work. The final thing I will say to you freshmen is, apart from that we do love you already, if you fail, we're going to take the attitude that we have failed. If you need help, we're going to give it. But we do not make the standards around here. They exist in nature. We are going to try to help you meet them. You must take this attitude about your work. Everyone depends on it. You can learn nothing at any moment when you are not working, and just as bad, you cannot help others if you do not prepare. That's why you have the honor code. That's why you have been warned that this is not easy. I will let the cat out of the bag. It's a lot more fun than it is painful. We here, the faculty over there, including my puffed up physics professors, <laughs> they're gonna be intolerable now after this. We love you. Why? It's so much fun to watch you because you've reached your, your thinking maturity now. You just don't have any experience. And so everything you do, you're doing for the first time, including this and this day. It is delightful to watch. We are enthusiastic experts at torturing the young. <laughs> and so, I welcome you with the words that I have said now 17 times as the last words I say at this ceremony. Get your boots on. Welcome.